Senator, last month you and nearly 50 former U.S. government officials and national security leaders uh, put out a proposal urging President Trump to stick to the Iran nuclear deal. Are you concerned that the U.S. will find Iran and certify Iran non-compliant with the deal? Certainly I was a part of that group that felt we should comply and that Iran should comply and that we should continue working with Iran. In my judgment, um, given the inspections by the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IEA, uh, we are, have some confidence that Iran has fulfilled its obligations. And I think we should indicate that at the appropriate times. Now, at the same time, I'm certainly aware that President Trump has raised a number of questions about whether he intends to do that or intends to recommend that our government continue with that. Uh, this is of great concern to me and I think to many who were in favor of the Iran deal, who worked very hard to make certain that it occurred, not just from the standpoint of the bilateral relationship between the United States and Iran, but given this extraordinary membership of Great Britain and uh, France, the European Union, Russia, China, all coming in this. It's an extraordinary event in this world on something of this consequence when all of these powers agree. And we are a part of that group and I'm very hopeful we're going to continue to be a part of it and keep stabilizing the unity. The U.S. have been asking to expand the IAEA's inspections, the International Atomic Energy Inspection, to Iran's military sites, a possibility that both Iran and the IAEA itself seems not to agree uh, with. How reliable do you find the inspections of IAEA as they currently are and their findings? I have confidence in the IAEA inspections. I have confidence likewise in these days in the intelligence services of all of the countries that are a part of this situation. The International Atomic Energy Group is not the only one interested in what's occurring with regard to any sort of development in Iran that might jeopardize this agreement. What do you make about the idea of uh, inspecting more than the current sites in Iran? It would be ideal. But at the same time, the negotiations that came to the agreement we have call for these inspections. Now, if all of the parties are prepared, really, to take another look at this, that's one thing. But for the United States unilaterally uh, to say this has to be uh, simply won't work at this point. You propose to restart quiet conversations. So could you tell us more about what kind of negotiations you have in mind and why quietly, by the way? Well, clearly, it would be ideal for Iran not to develop uh, nuclear weapons, period. Uh, within five years, 10 years, 15, or whatever may be the case. It was a strenuous negotiation that brought us to at least the length of time that we have a degree of world safety from that potential of Iranian nuclear development. It would be ideal to move that along further. However, that is going to require an extraordinary amount of constructive diplomacy. And so the negotiations, it seems to me, should be quiet. We should not uh, uh, leave out the possibilities. And uh, maybe in Iran's interest, I mean, perhaps we can think of ways in which that interest could be observed. But uh, at the same time, uh, quiet negotiations appear to me to be the optimum framework. Do you think the Europeans and especially France and President Macron should take the lead on this? I would not uh, deny President Macron leadership. Uh, I'm, de I'm delighted that we have so many fine leaders in so many very diverse societies in this alliance that's come about. Uh, so I'm not going to undermine confidence in any of them. At the same time, the United States has an obligation, clearly, uh, to continue to offer leadership and to work with other leaders and to respect their leadership. 
but specifically when your proposal, the proposal you sign, speak about a comprehensive strategy. What are you thinking about exactly? A full-on agreement or something more? Well, a comprehensive strategy would cover whatever came to mind with the negotiators, I suspect, at that point in history. Uh, clearly, there are many difficult uh, relationships with Iran. All sorts of activities they have engaged in, uh, both internally and externally, for that matter. Uh, in the best of all worlds, we would work with Iran so that it would be a good neighbor, uh, potentially a good ally, along with the other nations that have joined this treaty. We're a long way from that. Very, very clearly, the government of Iran is one that uh, is not compatible with our American ideals and that of certainly our European friends who are thinking about all of this. Uh, this is going to require an evolution in terms of governance and likewise, uh, hopefully, some strengthening of democracies really throughout the world that could work with Iran. And Senator, you propose, you and your fellow uh, former officials and security leaders proposed an idea which uh, touch up, touches up on this governance idea. So a new body would, which would include, yes, the US, yes, uh, Russia, even Turkey, but also Saudi Arabia and Iran to kind of talk also about the other major problems of the region. How likely is uh, to, uh, to manage to put Saudi Arabia and Iran at the same table? I don't want to uh, uh, judge the likelihood on a scale of one to 10. I think the proposal is very important. The difficulties between Saudi Arabia and Iran are obvious, but they're not the only fractious situations there. But they do bring to the fore problems with Qatar and oh, a number of, of items in the Middle East that are going to remain very, very difficult without there being much more negotiation, cooperation, at least conversation, at least some understanding of where all the parties uh, stand. Oh, it's the interest of the United States to have peace uh, and quiet, <laughs> to have uh, really the flow of people and trade. But we're a long way from that, given the diversity of these enemies as they look at each other now. But do you think, for example, that the new round of negotiations in whatever form should include not only the nuclear program, but also the other issues that are there concerning people in the region? Perhaps that should be the case, but I would not want to burden the potential success of either set by saying you have to include all of it. We're going to, I think, make progress uh, sort of step by step. The U.S. Uh, is saying that Iran is violating the nuclear deal in spirit. Are you uh, concerned that by withdrawing from the deal, uh, the U.S. could be politically or even financially isolated from the rest of the world? I'm not certain the United States would be isolated. I would just say I think it would be a mistake. Fact is that this was a deal that was difficult to come by, but very important for United States security, for Israeli security, for security of everybody in the world. To have development of another large nuclear program is more than the world really wants to take on right now. We are, are obsessed, understandably, with the problems in North Korea. But others could decide, all things considered, as they look at the Iran deal, that uh, they really ought to think about having nuclear weapons and, and would borrow the, uh, the, the materials and the know-how and what have you, as Iran has or as North Korea has, for that matter. Uh, if we're talking about a world that is more likely to be at peace, or at least uh, simply maybe has some uh, assurance that there will not be mass killing that would occur with a nuclear explosion in any city anywhere in the world. So we really ought to be working to try to make the Iran deal work, uh, to try to persuade the Iranians in the meanwhile, after it comes to a conclusion, 
that it's not advisable to continue on. This is not the best path for them. Supporters of the deal say by opening up to Iran and also uh, we open up to uh, new deals between American companies and Iranian companies like the deal that Boeing in, in, in America and Airbus in Europe signed with Iranian air companies. While critics of the deal are saying that economic deals are not good because they only strengthen Iran's position in the future, what do you make uh, of it? I believe that we're going to have to continue to try to work out deals with Iran on the basis that Iran's government and economy will evolve, that, that Iran has basically a young population that perhaps does not want to have the same difficult life that has been a part of their father's and grandfather's heritage, uh, that uh, Iran is a country of talent, but it needs to be a part of the world not an isolated situation, and which is seen as an enemy of a good part of the world. Um, now, whether specific trade deals are the ones for Iran, that's also an open to question, but at the same time, I would be in favor of trying to open up the relationship to the United States as well as to other countries. And, and this is the basis upon which Iran signed the deal that uh, heavy economic sanctions that were causing great trouble for the economy of Iran were to be lifted, and they were. Uh, now, Iran has gone off in various other directions that have been very irritating to the United States and to those who signed the deal, and I recognize that. Uh, I'm one who says that we should not penalize Iran by getting out of the nuclear deal uh, simply because we're uh, disturbed over some other operations they may have. But this is going to continue to require conversation, negotiation, a much more uh, relationship between our countries. So, Senator, I understand economic cooperation and dialogue are to you the way to go. One of the proposals which are very interesting that you made and your um, colleagues made is let's try to open a direct channel of communications between the U.S. and Iran to share uh, the mutual concern. Uh, what exactly are you thinking about? And then do you think is something like um, Secretary Kerry and Minister um, Zarif had a few years ago? I'm not certain that I could characterize exactly what the channel of communication ought to be. I would have to leave that to the leadership of our country and Iran. But nevertheless, uh, I think it's important that people are talking to each other. There actually is frank discussion, sharing of views, so we don't make mistakes, so that everybody understands what the facts of life are in the world, and likewise, how we can make improvement in our countries. So perhaps it shouldn't be a channel at top level, but something like a back channel, for example? Yes, a back channel might be the place to start. Uh, but I would not um, stay at that level indefinitely. Uh, I would hope that it would be seen as an evolutionary step. If for some reason um, this uh, Iran deal collapses in the sense that U.S. withdraw and even the Europeans don't keep the deal because they are afraid of U.S. sanctions, uh, are you afraid that Iran is going to restart and soon the nuclear program? I'm not sure how soon Iran can start a program, but I think there would be a great pressure upon the government of Iran uh, to do something in that area uh, to indicate that um, they are still a country that has to be contended with and that uh, there's somebody to worry about. Now, I would hope it would not be for further purposes, namely that they really want to have nuclear weapons because they plan to use them at some point or intimidate all the countries certainly in the Middle East. If no diplomatic solution is found, um, the most conservative factions inside Iran, and I'm thinking about the Revolutionary Guards, which have not only political clout but also very big economic clout in Iran, could basically be emboldened by a confrontation. Uh, are you concerned that uh, would make things more difficult in the future for Iran yes, and the world. Yes, it would make the Revolutionary Guard in charge would make things very difficult for Iran. First of all, just in terms of 
the quality of life for the people of Iran, for all of the people, not just the hierarchy, but uh, the people who really would like to be a part of this world, who, as far as I can tell now, are able to hear what's going on in the rest of the world. Uh, it may not be a, a totally open society in terms of press and electronic means and so forth, but there are many Iranian young people that I have heard of who, as a matter of fact, are fairly knowledgeable about what's occurring. They really want to be a part of that world, a part of the development of, of life that comes with uh, greater economic and political freedom. Uh, now, to, if you don't uh, have uh, that uh, to look forward to in life, uh, you really do have a dictatorship, an authoritarian government, which um, is going to constantly be at war with itself, leaving aside the problems of, of external relationships. Senator Luger, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.